In this lecture, we're looking at the concepts behind HTTP file upload. We're going to visit the XMPP extension protocol document for it. But before we do that, let's look at some visuals. The inner workings of HTTP file upload can be summarized in the picture here. On the left here, you see an XMPP client that is trying to send a file to other XMPP clients. The first thing it does is it checks if the server supports HTTP file upload. How does it do that? We're going to see that in the specification document. For now, let's suppose that it has a way to check if the server supports HTTP file upload. And if the server does support HTTP file upload, the second thing the client does is to request the permission to send that file to the server. And when the server accepts that request, it sends two things to the client. One is a put address where the client is going to upload the file. And the second one is a get link where other clients are going to download that uploaded file. When the client has these two links, it uploads the file to the put link. And then after the upload is successful, you send the link to other clients to download the file. And you see here that we have the server sending these links to multiple clients that can then download this file at uh, any given time. So conceptually, this is how easy it is to send files in XMPP using the HTTP file upload extension. We're going to visit the XMPP extension document right now and see how all this works. Okay, so here we are on the page for HTTP file upload. Uh, you can see the link here. And in the abstract, they say, this specification defines a protocol to request permissions from another entity to upload a file to a specific path on the HTTP server, and at the same time, receive a URL from which that file can be later downloaded. Okay, so this is what this specification is about. Okay, so let's look at the introduction. They say a lot about other technologies to send files and uh, their shortcomings and how HTTP file upload solved this. And basically, the momentum for creating HTTP file upload came from the fact that we needed a way to be able to send files to other people and that way had to work in cases where we have multiple clients connected for the same account and in cases where we need to send files in group chats. So if you send a file, it has to be able to be downloadable by multiple people at the same time. And uh, other technologies didn't really allow that and HTTP file upload solved that. That's what they're trying to say here. You can visit all these zaps if you want but you don't need to right now because we are focusing on HTTP file upload. So the requirements for this extension uh, were to be as easy as possible to implement and uh, HTTP is available virtually anywhere. So this was a good point for them to base this on HTTP and not be too hard on the way to distribute the URL. A user can really choose the way they send the URL and there are many technologies to do that. Uh, you could use out of band data using this extension protocol. And basically what this extension does is to allow other people to know that this is a file you sent them and it's not a normal link that they can click to, to go to other places. The sad thing is that Smack doesn't support this as of now, and we're going to have to use a hack of our own to, to get this working. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how that works. And another goal they had when designing this document was to not provide any kind of access control or security for file retrieval beyond TLS. And uh, TLS basically allows you to have a secure channel over which you can send your files so that they are not vulnerable to attacks on the internet. And all this says is that if you send your file using HTTP file upload, and if I get a link to that file, I can see it. So you should know this. And we're going to see that as we build our app, we're going to emphasize on that. In part three, they talk about how they check support for HTTP file upload. And this is not specific only to HTTP file upload. 
Um, many SMPP features use this and it's called service discovery. You should read this, but I'm going to give you the basics of how this works. And basically there are two requests you send to see if a service is supported. The first thing you send is this IQ here with a child element of curry qualified by the namespace of uh, HTTP Jabber or protocol disco items. And this is the key here. You want to discover the features on that server. And when the server gets this IQ, it replies to you with the features that it supports. Okay. And you see here, we get an IQ from our server. It has a query child element qualified by the same namespace that we sent. And it has a few items inside. You see that it supports HTTP file upload and it supports chat room service, which is for group chats. We're not going to talk about this here. And when we see that we have this item, we know that the server supports HTTP file upload. Don't worry, you're not going to have to do this on your own. Smack is going to help us to do that. And it's a matter of calling a method on some class to be able to check that. Okay, after you know that this service is on the server, you then send a discovery request to discover information about that service. And you send an IQ that has a child query element and it has a namespace of disco info here. You want to discover information about the service. And uh, the upload service replies to you with a few features that they have, okay? They give you the identity of the service, its name. They give you the features that they support, HTTP file upload. And it really is this, and they tell you some of the settings that they support. And you see here, the maximum file size should be of um, five megabytes. Okay, so now that you know that the service is available for you to use, the next thing is to request the permission to upload a file to the server. And uh, it is called requesting a slot. A client requests a new upload slot by sending an IQ get to the upload service containing a request child element. And you see here, this is our IQ. Inside we have a request element qualified by this NERM space, earn XMPP HTTP upload zero. You can see it here. This element must include the attributes file name and size containing the file name and size respectively. And you can see them here. The file we want to upload is called myjuliet.jpg and its size is here, 23 kilobytes. And you can send an optional content type attribute Okay, this is the IQ you send if you want to request a slot. When the server gets this IQ of yours, if it accepts your request to upload a file, it sends you an IQ result. It is an IQ of type result, and it has a child element called slot. Inside here, we have two URLs. One is the put URL, and you can see it here. It's a really long URL and uh, it can have headers in here. And it sends you another URL that is called the get URL. The put URL is where you upload your file and the get URL is where others are going to download the file that you, you send them. One thing I want you to notice is that these URLs have cryptic names inside. Look at this string here. And uh, it, it's not easily rememberable by humans. And this is where the security of HTTP file upload lays. The security is, is in having file names that are really hard for a human to guess. And uh, if I don't give you this URL, there's no way for you to know it. That's the security of HTTP upload. If somebody gets a hold of this URL, they're going to be able to download and see it. You, you should know this if you design your systems on top of HTTP file upload, okay? So now we are on a stage where we have these two URLs, the put URL, where we're going to upload the file, and the get URL that we're going to send to our friends to download our file. 
And when we get this, the following step is to actually upload the file to the put URL. And you see that there are some kind of errors that might occur in your process of requesting a slot. And the server simply gives you messages. You can look at this. In this case, we're trying to upload a bigger file and the server doesn't support it. It responds with an error of type modify that says not acceptable. File is too large in here. There are many other kinds of errors and uh, they talk about them here. You, you should look at this. Now we look at how you upload the file. There is no specification here on how you upload the file. You really use the technology for HTTP upload uh, depending on the technology that you are using. In our case, we are programming for the Android platform and we're going to upload the file using Android APIs. You're going to see how we do that when the time arrives. And this really is it. This is all you have to know about HTTP upload. They talk about some implementation notes, security considerations. You should look at this. Okay, now that you've seen the specification for HTTP file upload, I'd like to show you some uh, real IQs that I've captured on, in the process of doing this course. This is an IQ to request a slot, and you can see the destination address to be upload.salamo.im. This is my server. There's an ID here that is used for tracking purposes. You see the request child element in here, and inside we have the file name, the file size, and the content type. Okay, and the server responds with uh, an IQ of type result. Inside we have a slot, and inside the slot we have the get URL, which is this one, and the put URL, which is this one. Okay, now that you know how HTTP file upload works, I'd like to emphasize on some of its benefits. And one is that it works well in one-on-one -on -one chats, uh, but this is not very special because Many other technologies work with this, but the added benefit is that HTTP file upload works if you have multiple clients connected on the same account. Let's say you have your desktop computer using your one account and you are using the same account on your Android phone. Files that others send to you are duplicated on these two devices of yours and all you have to do is download the file and show it on your device of choice. This is where HTTP file upload shines. It works well in group chats. Remember, all you have to do is share the download link and they're going to download the file for themselves. We just said it, it works for multiple connected resources and it is secure in that the channel over which you send the files may be protected by TLS. But even if it's not protected by TLS, the full path to the file is really hard to guess. Look at this. See if you can guess this. Okay, now I think you have enough basics about HTTP file upload. In the next lecture, we're going to visit how Smack implements this and how we can use it in our Android apps. I'll see you there.